Welcome to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here, Vasil. Thank you. Um, he, well, we know each other for a while. Um, he's one of the he's one of the founders. Growth Marketing Conference It's basically the biggest growth marketing conference in Silicon Valley, San Francisco. And Vasil is going to tell us a little bit about himself mainly, but also about the conference. Welcome to the show, Vasil. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, Gerard. It's a pleasure to be here. Good, Basil. Your name doesn't sound very American. Tell me a little bit your background. I want uh, to know more. Definitely not American. When I I was born in Eastern Europe in Belarus, and I traveled to United States back in two thousand and one, and for the first ten years being here in the valley, I was completely disconnected from the startup world. So, I was actually working. Um, um, I was studying marketing and international relations, and um, I got my first internship in event and marketing, and that's how the whole idea of Growth Marketing Conference uh, started. So, it's been a good. Long good. That sounds that sounds amazing. How how many years ago was was the Growth Marketing Conference built or an idea? Of, what, since when it's been real? How many events did you have at the moment? Yeah, so originally, uh, my partners and I, we were organizing um, startup mixers for founders uh, called Startup Socials. And the idea of the mixers was to bring entrepreneurs together so they can share their challenges. And at the events, we would connect them with relevant uh, people to help them grow. And uh, my prior expertise was running larger conferences. And um, the idea of um, originally startup marketing conference came from connecting community of entrepreneurs with, um, with um, our desire to teach them growth. So that's how the first event came about. And in 2015, when we rebranded it uh, to the growth marketing conference, that's when the concept um, really took off and we started seeing larger companies attending our events and uh, now we will be hosting our biggest event in 2019 where we expect 1700 people from 17 and um, that's congratulations and i know how difficult it is to do an event i'm starting doing the meetups here in barcelona i think we have three or four and it's just tiny little event with 100 people and it's crazy the amount of preparation and bring 1700 people uh, 1700 tell me is everyone from us why someone from spain should go to the event yeah and i don't want it to sound like a sales pitch or anything but no we man we, there's no okay everyone there is no affiliate here i don't give a shit about affiliation i only bring friends and people i want to know that's why Basil, we obviously have the same need. That's why, man. Tell me why the uh, fuck shall anyone call no, the US for this? Yeah, we're definitely on the same page. So I I really like your approach because what's well, something that we do, we're all about community. And um, I personally um, don't care if I promote very often competitors, uh, competitive communities. So because I feel that there's no such a thing when it comes to event as community and community as competition, because you cannot really mm. have your own community. Everybody attends uh, events because of the value they get. So I, I really like your approach. And uh, going back to your question, um, our audience is truly global. The way we position Growth Marketing Conference in December, it's a global event. So uh, people from all over the world travel to San Francisco, Silicon Valley, often combining it with vacation. The weather is perfect in December here. Mm -hmm. And uh, learn from some of the best in the industry and also put together their growth marketing plan for the next year. So that's the whole concept. Okay, I'm just looking some of the guys that you have. Uh, it's like Lila from Dropbox. I don't know who else is. Oh, well, the guy from, well, now it's Spark Toro, but before Run Fishing, which is from Moss. Tell me a few other names. Why anyone would want, uh, why? Who is that? Do you know, do you have any other big names like the ones I say? Is more people to come? Yeah, so those are our previous speakers. We haven't announced the lineup just yet for 2019. But uh, we are already working on confirming some of them. And uh, I'm not going to reveal it just yet. Okay. 
okay. no, all of them confirmed, but definitely we'll have some big name from the company that's about to go IPO. So that's sort of the first announcement that. Just for me to understand, is it like a big room, they're telling how amazing they are, and then you're writing notes, or is it more like a master class from them? To so we, have both. we have some um, leadership and strategy, more of an inspirational keynotes, but we also have very tactical presentations. We have workshops. This year, for the first time, we announced uh, vertically focused content, and we have some sessions specifically focused on uh, e-commerce growth or um, fintech growth, healthcare growth. So mm. that we've been uh, getting a lot of feedback on that we need to introduce these types of to attract wider audience, and we're doing it this year. Good, I love it. And, and my recommendations for events, I'm not uh, well. I'm not big fans of things like web summit or super massive events. Is one event that's like I'm crazy, which is SaaS talk from. Alex, who has been in the show, he's just like amazing at how he's doing it and the growth he's making. He's building everyone with love in a place. And you guys the same, you know, it's, and how important is the event towards the networking that you're going to have on the event? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest misconceptions about the events industry overall, it's about content. Um, content is a big part of it. But, um, in my opinion, it's all about experience when everything comes together. And also, it's it's about people that you bring to your event as speakers, people that you attract as attendees. It's about the energy of the event, which uh, there are so many factors that play into this, including the venue, including the timing, including the theme. And uh, as an event producer, you have to bring the right people on board to help you orchestrate that uh, environment. And definitely recruiting the right people to be a part of it. So uh, speakers, definitely very important uh, element. But content, very often you can see, um, you can review the same content or very similar on YouTube. But it's what else, uh, what the speakers will bring to the table. Some of them would be willing to hang out with attendees after their session. This is something that we encourage um, our speakers to do every single time. It's all about all of the networking events that are happening within the event. So mm. as an event organizer or community builder, um, I highly encourage everyone who is planning to invest in the event, which I believe that uh, events would become a prominent marketing channel and growth channel for many startups um, in the next few years. Now, right now, it's still under the radar, but I highly encourage uh, everyone to think of events as an experience, as a product, and invest in it. Yeah, 100%. And the thing is, we like creating a community because, yes, you have other companies to find emails, to send emails. It's like, okay, what about if we build a community, we do an event, and we make sure, you know, it's like, we don't, okay, we don't give a shit about how many registrations, how many signups. This doesn't take us to, we, let's give love to everyone who's listening to the show, who on the Facebook group, we send the emails without caring if any. And I learned this from Neil Patel, which I think he's one of the people coming to the next year's event. Uh, I love uh, Eric Xu, who I don't know if he's he's a speaker, but man, he, you need to bring him. Eric Xu is like God to me. Eric Xu, Neil Patel. These guys, do, they're wow. building a massive community and they do it out of love. I don't know. Have you interviewed Eric? Have you interviewed Eric before? Well, you know what? Um, no, no, we know each other. We we met in the Absoluma conference. We met on well, SAS Talk. Uh, I listen every fucking single show from him, but I never have met. I interview Neil Patel, but not Eric Sio. Oh, I cool. yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah, he definitely built a great community through podcasting and a great speaker overall, good guy. So you should have him on the show. Yes, I will. I will actually comment and send him the link from here. I learned one of the first hacks I learned from Eric Xu. Well, he didn't teach me, but I type in, in a few years ago. It was sales 
self love uh the c of self love i think it's like uh, i don't remember search love right which one self love oh self love okay yeah uh self love and it was Kyle Porter and it was a youtube video from Eric and Kyle Porter was telling the first steps to grow the company. And I was like, listen it so many times. I even knew his values as a company. And then I fell in love with Eric, the way he was interviewing. And today I do interviews thanks to Eric Sure, I listen so much and I think it's, it's beautiful. And this comes to a question and it's like, why are you doing a growth conference? What's the core of why Basil is doing an event? Yeah, so for me, it's just, um... I'm very happy to see people connecting at the, at the events and when everything comes together, when me and my team worked very hard throughout the year to put together a show and people really enjoying, there's a certain uh, very special environment that is being created and the energy at the event and just seeing people getting value from it and connecting to each other. So. The way I think that my purpose is, is really to connect the right people so they can um, learn from each other and they can grow together. So when I see that these connections are happening, right? When you send this video to Eric, uh, hopefully he will be on the show eventually, right? Or uh, there are some many others connections that were made at the growth marketing conference that sometimes I hear from. Uh, that uh, and this is something that keeps me going because as you mentioned event is really hard business and we yeah. really don't have any other product or service that is behind growth marketing conference how how is it to put all the eggs in one basket because obviously I'm sure you sell a few tickets through the year but you most probably sell most of the tickets on November December or October November how stressful is that man yeah, uh, it gets better uh, over time, but still every single year it's there's one moment that I feel like, oh man, we're going to have to shut down the whole thing, right? Okay. So it happens every single year, but uh, looking back at the historical data and mm. the sales, I see that, okay, it seems like we, you know, not doing so well, but it's going to pick up. And you're absolutely right for mo most of the major conferences. The majority of ticket sales come later in the year, probably in the last quarter, if we're doing our event in December, for example. But also now, um, at the beginning, we were very much attended driven, meaning that most of the revenue would come from ticket sales. But currently, we build some very strong relationships with our partners who sponsor uh, the event and community. And this gives us a little bit more breathing room because we sign them up on board at the beginning of the year and uh, we have some budget uh, mm. this sounds amazing 1700 people coming to event and how many speakers do we expect to have uh this year maybe around 150 yeah really imagine it's just like yeah. 150 and where is going to be the event so the event is will be at the heart of san francisco again i, I don't want to say one no, just like because the con the contract is not signed but most likely it will be at the historic fairmont hotel where we hosted uh two of our previous shows okay that um, are we going to be sharing i guess it's a youtube video where people can check if it's, it's i guess for me i'm a european guy from spain we're not we're big for sangrias and siestas we're not big for Oh, I just lost you. Basil, I lost you, man. But you oh, didn't I'm like here. the joke. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Can yes, I just lost Basil. I think he didn't like my joke about sangria and tea. Hello? Hello, it seems I'm a here. It's weird that I feel alone. Okay. He's really gone. Guys, sometimes... <laughs> oh, he's coming. Basil, I'm just... Can you hear me? Yes, I can see okay. you now. I thought uh, you left. I thought you left because my joke was very bad. <laughs> but no, no, no. I love sangria too. <laughs> okay. okay. Portugal. <laughs> okay, good. I'm I'm happy you're back. What I was just saying is, yes, yeah, Spain is famous because sangria and paella, no, for building amazing SaaS. Oh, obviously we have a few great SaaS coming up now, but I guess this conference will. It's amazing for any European or East Side. Um, 
businesses outside from the US as well, which would be an experience to meet some American locals. Is it how many percentage of people is basically from outside the US? Yeah, we're about around 30% last year. And uh, our goal is to grow this number this year uh, to 40%. So that's one of the things that we're actually doing is building partnership with smaller communities or larger communities than ours all over the world. So they actually bring um, their communities to the growth marketing conference and we're providing them with special offers. Mm. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, which I'm very happy that uh, we share an offer, whatever. You, you do it whenever we post it. We will just, just do the whatever you want. Um, we are going to be sharing this in all social media just to share the love to everyone. And I'll have a few things. Um, one gave me a life hack. Tell me one thing that you really make you feel like different from everyone else in the world. And I would like to know the best book ever that you read. Okay, so life hack. So it's interesting. Um, so for me, um, I don't use any uh, software to track for project management uh, personally. Me either. So I use Google Calendar. So, um, what is that? Here? It's just papers about writing the notes from the interview. Oh. I I file them. Everything it's filed afterwards, man. Oh, cool. You should, uh, I guess, transcribe them from all other guests, too. But well, um, no, 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 it's private. It's my own notes. Oh, about you, huh? it, This is my notes where I've been learning from you and how many dates. This is this is for me. I do this because I learn. Anyway, sorry to interrupt you. No, no worries. You should publish a book based on all of the interviews. <laughs> one, day, one day. He takes away with the world. Uh, anyway, so the, the, what I do, I actually, and I know some people might do it, but my approach to goal setting and projects for myself personally, I every single Sunday, Sunday is my planning day. So what I do, I sit down for a couple of hours and I put all of the 10 top um, goals that I have for this week in my calendar. And I also schedule a check-in on Wednesday to see where I stand with the goals. Mm -hmm. And then at the very uh, end of the week, I always assign a value to each of the goals, how I was able, how far I was able to accomplish it. And sometimes the value could be from 25% to 100. So, and uh, combined from these 10 goals, I allocate the uh, whole percentage for the week to evaluate how productive I was, basically. And this is something that helps me down the road to see, okay, this was a productive week. If I'm over 60%, if I'm under 50, yeah. I'm not very productive. And then I actually, every single time I sit down, I know I don't have a moment when I feel like, you know, I don't have anything to do, or I'm a little bit uh, confused about the priorities because I have my top 10 goals. And then I'm looking at each of them to see, okay, this one is the one that my a team member can help me out. So I will outsource it. Mm -hmm. If I have three hours in my day, I can schedule to work on that project. So this is probably the most single life hack that helped me, considering that I also travel a lot and I put everything on my Google Calendar. Cool. It's amazing because I don't put, I try not to put much on my Google Calendar and about this pro one question about this productivity hack does it make you feel sometimes um kind of everything should be so super organized and there is no time for spontaneity what yeah. about that you see i think it has to do with the personality so for me i like to plan everything but i also keep saturday open and when I travel, I also schedule, <laughs> which just sounds strange, but I schedule sometimes for, you know, I know that I'm not going to be working. I probably will be meeting interesting people at the event. So I just don't have any meetings during that time. Mm, that's very good. What about one book that changed your life? You know, so I don't have one favorite book that I always come back to. Uh, so right now I'm actually reading uh, Extreme Ownership by Jaco Willink, which is great. And uh, I know that there are so many Navy SEALs books out there, but this one 
has been really, really actionable and helpful for me personally as I'm working on my leadership skills right now. My team is growing. But um, let's see what else uh, is out there. In honor to, yeah, is this guy, well, I've seen it. This guy is the guy who wakes up at 4 o'clock. I think so. Yeah. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. This guy, I, I remember seeing the video. I, I didn't see the read the book or anything, but this guy's um, uh, a video with Casey Neistat. I think he has one talking about extreme ownership, and that he says, "Wake up at four o'clock. It's a fight between you and the bed." Do you oh. what time? What time do you wake up? I gotta check that video out. Yeah, it's a video with Casey Neistat and this guy. You know, it's funny. It's the second time someone has recommended extreme ownership, and it it's, it hasn't really like um, that. You know, um, I'm funny. It's someone the same second time this book. Yeah, it's, he's a trainer and all that. Yeah, you should check it out. It's very actionable. It's not about war stories, but it's real world applications to each of the. Uh, stories that he has in the book. I highly recommend it. Okay, I'm okay. Certainly going to if it's it's, it's coming. It's, it's for a reason. Yeah, I usually wake up at around six thirty. Um, today yeah. I woke up a little bit earlier. <laughs> to be oh, thank here. you, man. <laughs> thank you. You yes, look very you. fresh. <laughs> you, I try to wake up early, but you know, and even sometimes go to bed early. But it's it's very difficult for me. Well, early for me, it's five or six we usually in final we stop eight o'clock until five you know it's fair enough you know mm -hmm. it's just good Basil man thank you very much I think it would be nice to catch up once you have the light who is coming and a few more things about the events we're happy to share with the group anything please share any links in the group anything that someone around uh, Silicon Valley on the on uh, dates, uh, confirm dates, please. It's a 10th and 11th of December in San Francisco. It's going to be a growth marketing conference. I am certainly going to try to come, and that's for sure, Brazil. And obviously, a few th for me, the reason to come is just to meet up a few speakers that I think is going to be just that top guys and also people around just to have a chat. Obviously, this is Silicon Valley and meet you. and. And have a good time, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Have a good time, and that's it. Just be, be, I put putting up seeds to grow for building up relationships in the future, which is, after all, it's what is about it. So we're building relationship with people. I love it. I love yeah. your approach, and um, I also great job on building the community. I, I, well, I like the fact that you're not putting your brand out there and in the name of the group. Well, so man, very in a subtle way. And I do this. I that's the only thing. Fine. It's this fine. Time. It's a little bit. It's a little. And and it's funny. It's funny that you say that because it's. I love selling and, but I built the group to learn about growth hacking and about marketing. Yes. And I built it on my own spare time. And then it was. It became a little bit more time consuming. And then it was like, mm, okay. I said to my co uh, my co founders. Like, I think we can use it for finding that lead. But I said, rule number one, we cannot sell, promote, affiliate, or anything. And I learned this from obviously from Josh Fletcher, which I think he needs to be in the event. And he's just a master guy. And I love the energy from Josh. And it's like, I remember first times I spoke to Josh. He's like, Josh, use this link, affiliate. And he's like, no, no, man. Just give it to the community. It's like, fuck, I love this approach, man. You're right. Let's fucking do it. And I went through the same way, and I think this is this is the only way. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, thank you very much, Vasil, for 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 saying it, which I, it's obviously most appreciated, man. Great, uh, awesome to be here, and um, I'll see you in Europe. We'll be there okay. in June. Oh, you right? you're in June here? Yeah, uh, we also have an Italian conference. Fuck, um, man, I will, yeah. we forgot about promoting that. Really? Tell me. This should be ending now, but yes. tell me. So, so we partnered up with, uh, with the local uh, group. Um, they produce several events uh, under Growth Hacking Day brand. And uh, now we're putting together a growth conference on June 3rd and 4th in Milan. So, and um, I think you'll be speaking at that one, right? You totally... Oh. You me? Oh yeah. really? Okay, okay. I didn't know. Wait, wait, wait. 
Okay, let me clarify something. I have someone reading my emails because I'm a disaster. That's why it might be. Oh, got Okay, it. this is not prepared. And um, what is the event? When or where? Where? Oh, it's uh, in Milan, Italy. Okay, and what's the event called? Oh my God, this sounds. We should hang up this and and do it pretty well. But it's okay. Let's go for it. Um, what what's the name? Uh, okay. it's a growth conference, a growth conference Europe. If you Google it, you you should find it. Yeah. Okay, this happens sometimes, and it's growth conference. I think the, the website will still be updated uh, very soon. Okay. Yeah, but uh, and speakers will be announced very soon. But okay, and I'm a speaker. Wonderful, I love it, man. And yeah, super happy to to be there and share with you. When can we promote then the speakers? And oh, you make it. Uh, we, can, we can connect on it later. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously the same. And who's do we have any announcement for people who will be coming there? Uh, you know what? I think we'll just we'll come up with a big announcement uh, in just a few weeks. We're still confirming a majority of the speakers, but oh, okay. One minute, which I didn't. I knew it, but I forgot about it. Consider yourself announced. Yeah. Oh, wonderful! I like it, man. Let's see. And how much are they going to be the tickets? Where they can buy it? Wait, let me do it here. Let me do it here. Yeah. So Where I think. Um, it uh, starts with 200 euros, and then the price is going up after afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, anyone around Italy, no. Europe, Growth Conference Europe, certainly I recommend you to go well. Probably you will see me, which is good. And and anything else, Vasil? I think it, probably in the next few days when we have the layout of people coming up and, and a few things, it will be nice to catch up again. You tell me and promote it in the group, we'll be super happy. Yeah, and I appreciate having me. Uh, and it's not about just, you know, my events. I'm always happy to, to talk about other events. I attend a lot of events. And just my message, I guess, the way I would like to wrap up, that I feel that um, every single person, every marketer should be thinking about events, um, how you can leverage events to grow. And I think you're doing a great job at it. And my prediction that in the next couple of years, it will become a viable channel like performance marketing, like search engine optimization. Um, I'm seeing a lot of companies already investing in events as an industry. And this is something that will only grow mm, that sounds amazing thank you <laughs> it's called even marketing man even marketing let's fucking do a book even marketing.com all right basil do not hang up please thank you very everyone remember if you can send emails with love better and if you find them we'll find a little even better remember thank you basil for being in the show and do not hang up thank you to everyone thanks everyone